Hey, Karen Roby and Dallin Adams here for Tech Republic. Really uh, interesting stuff here, Dallin, today. We're talking about how AI is uh, changing the shipping industry. And as we know, there's really no industry that's not, hasn't been touched by technology, it seems. Uh, but really, the shipping industry has stayed pretty much the same for however many years uh, going back. So this is some really cool stuff here that you've been learning. Yeah, you know, it's the shipping industry. I think the, the stats on that are about 90% of world trade moves by ship, which is kind of an astronomical figure. It's not what I would have guessed just if I had to pick a number. Yeah, so the shipping industry is kind of ripe for um, digital transformation at the moment. But as I was learning, sometimes within the digital transformation por uh, process is the idea of transformation, obviously. And the shipping industry, sometimes they're starting it with pretty crude elements and they're having to completely overhaul these these uh, ports, these ships. Um, one of the individuals I spoke to was talking about how he shows up at a port and sometimes to measure the size of the ship, two people need to actually get on board with the rope to, to see how wide it is and how long it is. And then they'll figure out which, which dock it can go to. So sometimes you're starting from scratch with digital transformation and shipping. Yeah, it's really a fascinating, uh, you know, Dallin, and in, the, in this article, you really dive into specifically artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, it, which that technology could have an incredible impact, really transform the industry down the road. Yes, and it kind of works in all over the place, as you can imagine. You can, you know, once the ships are built into these sort of like digital tw twin environments that also involve the port, and there's a lot of moving parts there. But once you have that, you can sort of feed this information into a hub and use artificial intelligence to make and streamline better workflows, better scheduling, ins and outs, so that you cannot have a bottleneck at the port with just boats waiting to have cargo unloaded and loaded. Um, another way you can actually use it is um, actually with the crane operators. That was a really interesting point I found out was just, um, so you have these huge cranes at the ports just there operating and lifting and lowering cargo all, all afternoon, all day long. And those cranes, we've seen those crane collapse stories plenty of times over the years. They're, they're horrifying events um, because as they're up there, they're moving these huge boxes, the winds pulling them, the winds gusting through and these structures pinned and torque. But you can actually sensor up those towers, uh, those cranes, and you can monitor that. You can feed that data into a machine learning program and use that for preventative maintenance and sort of predict failure before it happens. Yeah, it would be truly amazing how much, uh, you know, like you said, time they could save, uh, potentially catastrophic events that could be uh, avoided. And uh, really, Dallin, one of the things that really caught my eye, too, in the article is fascinating is this idea of an autonomous ship. Talk about that. Yeah, that was, you know, I started researching this piece and I was just touching on so many things, uh, just going down a rabbit hole here. But yeah, one, one of the big movements within the shipping industry is autonomous shipping. And then, you know, unmanned vessels at that. So it's the idea of you have to have this super sophisticated craft that uses radar, LIDAR, GPS, all kinds of components, including, so you have the ship that's sailing the high seas, you need to know what's around it to navigate, but you also need to know what's going on internally in the ship itself. And that involves its own set of challenges. Uh, and machine learning can be used there as well. So you can so there's two ways to approach it. You know, there's the idea that like, oh, if something fails, I'll just have a backup. But you can't just really build out redundancy forever. You can't have a backup for every backup. Or then what's the real point of having an autonomous ship? Um, so the way you can do it is you can actually sensor up maybe an engine room or a bow. And you can use the same machine learning there to monitor it, look at that data and pinpoint trends, and then maybe know when that, that machinery could fail and then service it in advance. And when we talk about these, uh, the idea of this autonomous ship, Dallin, um, you know, expand a little bit on if you don't have humans on board, uh, you know, you don't need bathrooms and, and all of these things. So we, you know, it's changing the size of the ships potentially and, and, you know, what's needed to get from point A to point B. Totally. You know, like a, a lot of these systems, a lot of these boats, you know, you put two or three humans on board, then you immediately have to add life support systems, especially if these things are going to be on the seas for weeks and months. Um, so if you put some humans on there, you're going to have to have places where they can eat, use the restroom and sleep. So then you have all of these quarters, all of these rooms, and most importantly, a lot of extra weight. So if you remove that, you can make the ship smaller. If the ship is smaller, it's also lighter. So you have a lighter and smaller ship so it can actually coast through the water at a more efficient rate. 
I'm using less fuel, the, the ship is also smaller itself. So the construction cost is theoretically lower. Yeah, and, when, and I'm sure with the goal of lighter, smaller, also potentially safer if, uh, you know, it helps to keep the humans away uh, from the ship. So from a security standpoint, though, how, you know, when you think about these big cargo ships and, and being out there, un, you know, unmanned, I mean, from a security standpoint, what would that look like? Yeah, there's, that's the idea. You know, a lot of these larger vessels, that's like kind of the next, the next era of this. Like right now, it's sort of um, um, national seas. You're like in your own open waters around your own country. But then, yeah, the longer game is building these huge, huge cargo vessels, potentially unmanned in, 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 in the future. And yeah, there's this idea. I, I asked one of the people I spoke to about this. Like, well, what if, what if there's like a piracy event? And they're like, well, if you think about it, if, if the pirates are coming on board, they're actually there usually to take ransom. You know, they're not there to just like to unload these huge like containers. They're there, there to like put the human beings and use them as a ransom situation. So by removing the human element, you're actually reducing a risk. But then at the same time, there's a whole new risk involved. If you have an entirely interconnected ship using GPS and all these virtual front doors, it's a new cybersecurity vulnerability. Yeah, that's the unfortunate thing is it could become a target, uh, you know, just like anything. Uh, so cybersecurity is the other end of things that they that they have to keep in mind. Uh, really fascinating stuff here, uh, Dallin. Was there any type of, did you get a sense, the people you spoke with, like a, of a timeline or what, uh, you know, anticipated when some of these things could start rolling out? Yeah, I, I touched on that, you know, because, you know, I spoke to a uh, several representatives, several shipping organizations from like the seafarer labor side to just like maritime companies themselves. And what I came across was these, sometimes these ships, sometimes these vessels are they, on the seas for 25 years. Their life expectancy is 25 years. I believe one of the individuals I spoke to said they recently deboarded a boat that was just celebrating its 100th birthday or something. So wow. it's the idea that, yeah, these boats are, are, are in use for decades sometimes, you know? So to build a new one and replace the old ones, this is decades in the making. You know, even when they first create these huge autonomous ships, that's one. You know, this is this is decades in the making. Yeah, definitely. Well, it should be interesting, if anything, uh, to see how it, it it starts to unfold, Alan. Well, I know you've got a great piece together, and like you said, it ended up being a rabbit hole that you went down. Just one thing leads to another, and sometimes that's uh, you know the best articles we put out there when you aren't exactly sure even what you're gonna. Uh, run into with this but you've got that all up on tech republic there and uh, we hope all of you will check that out and we really appreciate you all watching